the conversations were, my kids will never own a home here. Yep. So unless they... Three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to another episode of YQL Real Talk, where today we have a special guest, somebody that's never been on here before. I've only had two guests, so... Hey, a should, small company. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, very exclusive to be on this podcast. No, I'm just kidding. But today we have Stephen Calm, who is actually a client of mine who moved here from BC, specifically Surrey, BC. Moved here August. a month ago now, two months? No, August. So well, yeah, right. You moved here a few months ago, yeah. so August. And end, then, end of summer. Right. And you're renting for a bit. Stephen is a teacher at a local school here yep. or counselor, counselor at a, local, yep. at a yep. local school here. Work for your mm-hmm. uncle. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And he uh, he made the move from BC, like I said, like so many others are doing right now. And did I miss anything about you? No, I mean, that's good. Me- I moved here with my wife. We're uh, we're settling and we're happy. And we were also a, uh, what is it a fan? Fan of your of your uh, YouTube? Sure. That's, sure. How, we, that's yeah. how we, that's actually how we, uh, we got introduced to Lethbridge. I mean, it's not like I didn't know about the place. Right. I've had friends that grew up here and, and things like that, but I uh, never saw it once before. And I was like, Bingo. <laughs> awesome. Well, so the videos are working. They obviously, are working. They're which working. Is awesome. Yep. Cool. You've actually, you've actually conscripted somebody here. Nice. Yep. That's good to hear. So yeah, full disclosure. Yes, I was a client, but I found you first. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing. So the reason why I invited you on the podcast this week is because you are one of the people that made the move. Like I said, you're migrating into Alberta and specifically Lethbridge in this market. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the headlines out there, there are a ton of people that are actually doing this. So I don't have any current numbers and it's really hard to find them, which is super frustrating because there is so many people moving. But I I read to Alberta, it was something around like 28,000 people from from BC. Since? Well, since... uh, I'd probably be within the last year okay. for within the, within the actual. So the last thing that I read was a quarter one of 2022. So the first three months there was 20,000 people yeah, in exactly. quarter one, yeah. which is wild. <laughs> so the question I have for you is why did you make the move? I mean, the backstory really simple, um, was the middle of renting there and, you know, rented a townhouse. It was a nice enough place. Right. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a fairly educated person and, uh, my wife ran, runs her own or had run her own, uh, business as a hairstylist. And we just looked at the, the impossibility of actually getting into the market there, uh, within what we consider is just a fairly standard lifestyle. I mean, we were renting a two and a half bedroom, uh, townhouse, you know, it was nice, but the price for that was upwards of 2,300 bucks a month for your rent for the rent. And so when we were looking at that, then the, the landlord's like, oh, we, uh, we're going to sell. So we're at the whims of the landlord. Yeah. And, uh, like so many people. And I just, I was looking at my wife and I go, I, I just can't understand why we can't get into the market. Um, we had a variety of options. Many of us young folks, you know, we have some support from family, et cetera. Yep. But we would have to have at minimum borrowed, uh, you know, a early inheritance of over, you know, quarter million dollars. Yep just to get into the market to have a lifestyle that is wouldn't have been comparable to what i was renting right so you go well why and then you know op- opportunity is a big piece too yeah uh pr- put it simple my dad's like if you ever thought of calgary or lethbridge and i looked at the lethbridge job opportunities i'm like mm, i can do that okay and uh got my interview and and really had to take a serious look at okay are we doing this yeah and the biggest piece was we started looking at the housing market. Yeah. <laughs> Literally going, I can't believe this place here is, you know, $375,000. Yep. Like, oh, well, and it has a basement suite. Oh, <laughs> well, maybe we can make that work. Yep. And then we started, we kept on digging in. And I mean, I, I've listened to one of your podcasts recently or mm-hmm. uh, videos where you're talking about mistakes people make. Yep. So we certainly started getting our eyes on things. Okay. And we're like, there was a couple that I'm, I drive past even today. I'm <laughs> like, I remember really looking at that one and liking it a lot. But yep. that, that draw of just, we can have the same kind of, we can have the same kind of life, but be homeowners. Right. Like that's. Which is huge. That's a huge piece. I mean, it's yep. untenable out there you either need a living inheritance or you need to uh you need to uh have a really good job you know be yeah. i think they i've been reading the the average um average price of people in vancouver that to be able to own a home is family income of at least a quarter million a year yep 
like minimum for sure i mean like the average i'm pretty sure the average home price out there is like 1.2 oh i, I stopped looking a while ago because i moved here so <laughs> <laughs> like I and I'm sure you've seen in Lethbridge, 1.2 million gets you oh. a mansion oh, yeah. in wherever part of the city you want with yeah. a view, yeah. like whatever you like. So, well, and one of the one of the considerations that really kind of pushed me is, you know, I decided to go back to school. You know, mm -hmm. do, do I put my my money in the market or do I do and so? So I went back to school, and in the time of getting get finishing a master's degree, so you know, three and a half years, I watched my mom's townhouse. Nice townhouse, nice place in in, in Surrey as in, well. Yeah, in, in Langley, okay. Surrey. Yeah, it's in uh, in an area called Murrayville. Nice area. In a five year term, when she bought it, was purchased at six hundred seventy five thousand. Um, it's a three and a half bedroom, and then in five to six years, it's moved from that to her neighbor sold just just before the interest rates went up. Yep, uh, one point eight million. Crazy. That's what I mean. It's like how yeah. I feel for you because if that was me out there, like it would be so frustrating yep. and uh, discouraging to know that you'll probably never be able to own a house. Like how do you afford it unless you win the lottery or something or I don't know. Well, in the conversations I was having with, uh, so I was a vice principal out there and I was having with my colleagues and the conversations were my kids will never own a home here. Yep. So unless they, you know, make it big, Get you know, get the type of education that lets them bring in multiple. Which everybody's six hoping for their kids, of course. <laughs> but then the realistic part of them is, no, they're going to be living with me for most of my life. For like, that's we're going to have to figure out how to yep. get a house together, yep. or develop our basement, or whatever it was. And it was, you know, I and when I finally said we're leaving, I had so many people come into me being like, yeah, we're looking Alberta too. Really? <laughs> it's unbelievable the amount of people that would be like, yeah, we're, we're looking at Red Deer. We're looking at Calgary. Or, okay. And I was like, check out Lethbridge. Here's a video. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously there's pros and cons about every city, but Alberta in a whole, like, in general, is a lot more affordable than anywhere in BC. Oh, yeah. Like I mean, in Calgary. I know Calgary's on average is about $200,000 more than Lethbridge, but that's still like, if you're coming from BC, it still looks like a screaming deal. <laughs> On people that are are currently um, house poor, mm -hmm. so they own a they own a house that's valued at one point two. Right. The conversation of I can get out of my mortgage and go buy something and have no mortgage. Yep. Because yeah. the values went that's, up so high there. Out of all the BC or Ontario people that have helped move here, I bet you that have been homeowners back home. Seventy percent of them. I've been able to buy cash and mortgage free. Some Done. of them are in their early thirties. Well, and you imagine, you imagine 40s. the amount of uh, of financial freedom that would would provide a person. Oh yeah, my actually my parents just did the same thing. So they lived in Mission, which is oh yeah, I know pretty Mission. far away from yep. from Vancouver. Yep. And so a lot of people, I've actually heard um, some people, even realtors out here, say, "Well, you know, I'm tired of people in BC complaining about how expensive it is to get a home. Like, if you want a home." You can make it happen. Like maybe you just can't live downtown Vancouver and you got to move outskirts, but that's not the case anymore. So well, my, my parents, they bought yeah. this condo for two seventy five. I think probably close to seven years ago now, which is reasonable price. Reasonable like, price, yeah. Doesn't seem too expensive. They they just sold and they they could have sold a little bit earlier at the top of the market as well, but they ended up selling for just under seven hundred thousand. So imagine seven years, half a million dollars. <laughs> Best investment you've ever made Absolutely. if you sell and, right. and do something with it. But yeah. Yeah. But I think there's actually now that I've kind of removed myself from that market, there's been an underlying almost attitude of your real estate purchase is going to make you big money. Yeah. Like that's, there's this kind of strange space that people seem to be in there. Well, yeah. And, and it, it's been true. Yeah. It's, it's it hard has not. been, but again, it's not the, let's call it the average of a human existence. Right. Right. Like these are outlier places in the world yep. that are just unique in how they've blown up in terms of the values. Yep. I mean, Canada in general, I think is blown up quite a bit. Yeah. It depends but, on where you live, but, yeah. but you know, comparing it to even our neighbors to the South, you know, there just, it doesn't seem to be the same type of like just bullish markets that they've had here depends on to where, say of yeah i think a lot of like the rural places like yeah. montana yeah have gone screaming all, like throughout all of covid because everyone was trying to escape get out. the cities and yeah, get yeah. out and but and nobody like, knew that before covid no and if you were in california you would think that you were making a great investment but so many people leave in california too that i don't know what their market's doing exactly i just right. know that there's a lot of people leaving so so leave a comment 
you're from those places. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we'd like <laughs> see I'd, what see what that's about. For sure. I would like to know. Because yeah, I just I'm I think the piece that uh, that I've really appreciated is is coming to a smaller town. I think that's been an interesting transition. Right. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, because Surrey is like a it's like it's, it's all connected out there, right? To Vancouver. Well, yeah, and it's, leave, so. I mean, it's a big uh well, Surrey landmass wise is one of the biggest municipalities in Canada. Right. And uh so it's diverse. It's got lots of people from all over the place. And Vancouver itself is a very busy place. Yeah. But it's interesting to like nobody really knows their neighbor. Okay. It's such yeah. a yeah, it's like I I don't think I could name any of my neighbors I live near for the last ten years. Right. Just so, more of a city mentality to keep city, to yourself yeah, type keep of thing. Yourself, yeah, so. I guess you and your wife, when you're working out there, how long, like what was your commute like to work <clears> every day? Let's say, let's talk, I guess I could say what is an acceptable commute. Sure. So we lived in New West for a while, okay. so New Westminster, so kind of a little more central, a little closer to the city. Okay. Um, and my commute out to Langley was, because that's the district I was in, could be average from 35 to 45 minutes okay. if traffic was okay. It's not too bad. No, it's not too Reasonable. bad. Reasonable. And my wife, same, uh, when we moved to Surrey, she, her, her location was, uh, was about the same, but if the traffic was at all gnarled up, then we're talking about an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah, which that would get old pretty quick. Yep. But 30 minutes seems reasonable. Yeah, like, it's not too bad. But no. again, we also pay for that too, right? Because we could live further out, like you but say. Then, but then you're then you're dealing with much longer commutes. I knew people that lived out in Chilliwack and they were commuting into whether it was Langley to go to work there or also all the way into Vancouver because yeah. they could. I mean, that was one of the first places my wife and I started looking is actually Chilliwack. Okay. Because it was still, yeah, you could probably buy an apartment in the $400,000 range. Yeah. Right. Yep. So I don't um, know what it is now, but. Well, my mom, again, for example, lived in Mission and she lived, worked downtown Vancouver, like on oh, East Hastings. Wowzers. So it was like an hour and a half Easy. on a good day yeah, to yeah, get yeah. to work. Yep. So we had on an hour and a half to work and an hour and a half back from work. It's an extra three hours to your work day. You're working eight hours plus an hour and a half each way. So you're at almost an 11 hour work day. Like it's, you don't get paid for driving no. either. You, no. you got to pay to fill up your tank every second yeah. day and everything. So brutal. So yeah, Whereas, now my, now my commute, when I first moved here it was four minutes. You guys were renting Rabbit. for the first couple months to try to feel out the city type yep. of thing. So. And then we bought, and now my commute is 14 minutes. Oh, Grand terrible. total. Of terrible. Minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're basically one, you're on the West side and then you work with North. So you're basically on two opposite ends of the city, right? Yep. So you could get a little bit further away, but not much. Not much. <laughs> You'll be out of the city. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. I was That's very amused. I, for when I first got here, I was like, oh, let's drive through the city. <laughs> oh, there's the end of the city. <laughs> <laughs> if you drive around the city, it'll take you a little bit longer. A little longer, but you know, um, straight through. Well, that's a, that's a lot of when when clients are coming here, they always ask me, well, what's the best neighborhood? What neighborhood should I avoid? And I'm, most of the time I just say, find the house that you like and you're you're going to be happy with it. Like you're going to be, be happy with the neighborhood because most neighborhoods are okay. Tell you've lived here apparently long enough to complain about those extra few minutes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. So we actually used to live on the north side. We moved to the west side now. And when we moved, Chelsea was upset and she did not want to leave the north side because it's going to take her so much longer to get anywhere. And then when we moved, she just plugged into Google Maps how long it took from our north side house to Costco from the west side house to Costco. And it was one minute difference. The essentials. <laughs> yeah. The yeah, essentials. Yeah. No. And that's, I think that was, there was a, a joke that my wife and I started ta telling people that I think here in Lethbridge, if they could add a, a slogan to the sign, it would be Lethbridge. It has everything you need. <laughs> is that, is that a good thing? Yeah. Just everything you need. Yeah. Or? I mean, okay. and I think, I think, you know, I know you and I've talked about this before, but you know, is there things that I miss? For sure. Like, yeah, I, that was one of, one of my questions. Yeah. I, I think of, uh, I think of being able to eat around the world in Vancouver and like, and the options. Good food scene in Vancouver for sure. Oh, it's, it's one of the best, especially if you have a, a penchant for whether it's Chinese or, mm -hmm. or Japanese Anything or Asian. like it's, it's some of the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, and I certainly had my, my go-to spots. And so there's, there's a bit of that. I think I'm eating a little more at home, but yep. I'm saving a little more money, yep. which is not bad. For sure. Um, I think there is, 
at least one option of every sure. type of variety. Yeah. But like you say in Vancouver, every, there's like, need. well, there's like 10, if you want to go for ramen, there's like 10 good ramen places. Exactly. If you want to go for uh, sushi, there's 20 good sushi places, right? Like Lethbridge, there's a few sushi places. There's like one really good ramen place in my opinion. And there's like one of everything, but yeah, you just don't get that same type yeah, of variety. Yeah, don't you get, don't get the variety. So that is one thing that, I mean, we, we certainly do miss. Um, we've already bombed into Calgary quite a few times. And so, you know, yep. it's getting to know a new food scene there. And I think it's a little different, but, yep. but we're pretty. I can help you out with that too. Oh some yeah. Pretty good places in Calgary. Good. So I, I just, that is kind of the one piece, but at the same time, when it comes to trade-offs, I mean that, and, uh, and everybody talks about the wind. Yep. Yep. In the last couple of days, I'll say, okay, okay. It just kind of keeps on blowing. Yep. It's interesting. It's here. But at the same time I go, I'll take sun with wind over being socked in rain right month after month yeah like that's right. something i've noticed is overall just generally happier i mean it's nice to have a little more money in your pocket for sure and it's nice to see something see the sun for there's 333 yes. days of sunshine a year one of the sunniest places in this whole country that's yep. actually i walked in was, was we started talking about this i came home i had done some more research maybe watched one of your videos and i go Hey, so did you know that that's the sunniest place in all of Canada? And that actually was like, oh, okay, that's uh <laughs> that's not a nothing. Yeah. It's not nothing to be able to recognize that you actually can get a lot more vitamin D, yep. get a lot more yep. uh, just overall better mood. The cold is certainly notable, but I found that after you get through one of your first really good cold snaps, then you're like, oh, it's minus two. It's feeling pretty warm today. <laughs> exactly. And it's like you you talk about the wind in the winter. So it'll get freezing cold. The wind comes in, blows in all the warm air. And yep. today it was windier oh. than heck this morning. Yep. It's calm out now and it's plus seven. Yep. So it's like, yeah, you got to put up with the wind for two days and then it'll warm up again. When I talked to my dad up in Edmonton and he's like, oh, it's minus seven. And, but it's been pretty nice. I'm like, yep. Ah, well, we'll take not that we'll, nice. <laughs> we'll ta- yeah, we'll take we'll take the uh, trade off because again, I think just situational. It's an interesting. Um, yeah, and, and and again, I mean, this is the weird part is that we actually moved sight unseen, so we got to walk into this town completely fresh eyes. Oh, you didn't take, come take a visit first or anything? Not before I took my job. Yeah, so it was like <laughs> we're doing this. Yeah, it's all done. We're yep. we're we're looking. So we actually we took that. You know, some people might find that a silly step, but again, I think that's indicative of the issues in Vancouver. Some yeah. of these, some of these places where you're just like, you know, why am I continuing to do the rat race just to be able to get through to the next paycheck? Yep, and, and have nothing to show for it by the end. Well, obviously, I'm biased, but I think you yeah. made the right move. Yeah, um, like like I said, if I couldn't get into uh, a real estate market, it would be super discouraging. Mm. So. It, it is nice to see that we still have this opportunity here and I'm really trying to push that for local residents here that have not bought a house yet. Yeah. I'm like, you guys don't know how good you have it. Like go talk to Steven. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my niece, we were telling her a bit about it. We were like, yeah, you know, maybe you should think about this would be a good place as a young person to kind of yep. get your feet under you. And even the opportunity of being a young person who could actually own a place. And, right. And her comment was, it's like you're stepping back into the 1960s. Mm-hmm. In terms of prices? In terms of just what you can do with your life. Like, hey, you can actually work just a reasonable job. <laughs> not a, you know, don't need necessarily huge education to start getting yourself into the market. Yep. Right? Like you yep. can finish high school and get a job. Yep. And some people don't need to finish high school and I they saw, can still get a job. I guess I saw a meme the other day. It was like, I remember when you could just like, you know, work and pay for your mortgage out of the money you made from your job because so many people are turning to side hustles and whatever else just to get by right yeah and it's so that's some of those pieces that that again if i encourage people if they do have a chance to take a look at it is it going to change yeah you're going to be in a different place and Mm -hmm. it's a i mean my wife's not super stoked on the rattlesnakes. Have you seen one yet? No, okay. not yet. No, but apparently you know where they all are. Uh, yeah, you can find them if you're looking for them, but it's very rare you're ever going to see one. Right. Other than that, I mean, I would say even the even the the topography, I'm like, you know, I sit back and I go, you know, I drive down Whoop Up. Mm-hmm. 
and you get a nice sunrise like we did this morning. And I'm like, you know, it's not a bad looking town. Like, yeah. It's not a I bad, mean, the we, coolies uh, and the. Now that we moved here, we, our bedroom window faces, like we're, we're kind of, we kind of sit like the tallest on the street oh, for nice. whatever reason. Yeah, yeah. And then we have a big window, like the size of our living room here upstairs in our bedroom. So yeah. every morning we get a wicked sunrise and it's one of my favorite parts about this house. And when I think prairie coolies, sunrises or something. Oh yeah. And the big yeah. sky. Yep. That's a, that's a thing. Yep. I saw my first tumbleweed though a couple days ago. Oh, yeah. I'm like, oh, there's one. <laughs> yeah. We are in the middle of uh, what is it would be Canada's uh, Canada's Wild West. Canada's Texas. Yeah, yep. that's right. Yeah. Question for you: What is there other than food? Is there anything else you miss about back home? Of course, family and friends sure. and stuff. Like, yeah, there's. It was a big uprooting. Yeah. You know, having to say goodbye to a bunch of people, and you know, people thinking you're. I mean, BC tends to have an attitude about Alberta. Right. All, all those redneck hicks and all that stuff. <laughs> Besides that, I can't like it's you're living in we're living Canada. Yep. So it's like it's rainy rainy Canada versus windy Canada. Like <laughs> sure. standard of living is still pretty high. Um there's a lot of things that I think are really unique and positive. I mean, like that YMCA is some like a wonderful piece of work that mm-hmm. we've got there. Yep. That's I mean, second second biggest in Canada, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, yep. you know, great facilities. Um, lots of opportunities. I mean, do I miss the mountains for sure? But, you know, I actually was surprised how close we are. Mm-hmm. Um, Have you been out there yet? I haven't gone out that way, but we okay. did go down to Montana. I mean, that was nice. Okay. You know, I went to Whitefish. I yep. mean, that's Whitefish is awesome. Three and a half hours away. Yep. In the summer, you got to go to Waterton. Yeah. no, It's about an hour and a half. And then we just went skiing at Castle Mountain. Yeah, and it's about an hour and a half. The vicinity to stuff. I mean, that's kind of, I mean, we talk about food, but there's a variety of other things I mean, yep. from, from where we lived, you know, we have three mountains to go skiing on and, and the oceans there. And yeah, I think as a person who really enjoys the water, I do miss the ocean for sure. But at the same time, there's some, I guess, come back to everything's a trade-off. Yep. And what I've found is the trade-offs haven't been enough in the negative right. for us to stay. Like it was like, you know yep. what, we could stay there pay way too much money for living we'd never be able to do anything anyway right and it's not like i mean like i said my wife and i it's not like we're sitting there being like hey we're you know just going through and trying to try to have our hustles that we're just barely getting by it's like we should we were educated and and well-seasoned professionals i'm like become shocking when you go all right well i can't i can't do it like we put all this investment into our into our past to get to a point just to be said no you yep. can't you can't have a you know no house for you yep <laughs> it's like oh well i know so now being here just seeing that opportunity yeah moving's a big pain mm-hmm. I, I could tell you a nightmare story about a moving company Uh-oh. but uh we won't i think they're all criminal those organizations well so, i have one company that's been uh recommended over and over and over good recommend them because okay. they're if you actually know them and you can tell people to not use any of these other ones okay. there is a nasty habit of uh, moving companies to take your stuff not deliver it and then raise the price before they drop it off and it's become huh? yeah i mean the company that we used yeah. ended up making global news three weeks after they dropped mm. their stuff off yeah i remember you said that and then there's another one that i saw in toronto that uh they were running mm-hmm. two two brothers running 11 different moving companies and it was the same p- pattern They'll pick up your stuff, usually not when you want them to, at your own expense, and right. then then they'll store it for however, however long they want you to, uh, you know, till it becomes a pain in your neck. Right. And then all of a sudden they're dropping it off and the price was double. Hmm. So I would recommend if you can suggest. Horror stories. Just, I, do, I do have a good mover that's been coming up clutch for people. Because I would say again, if but. not, then you haul it yourself. Yeah. Like get it. I mean, I, I was lucky enough to, uh, to conscript some, uh, some young folks to help. And right. you know, that, that is, that was a lot easier. My last second move than yep. getting stuff to Lethbridge. Cause it took them six weeks to deliver it. Whew. And I know that there were people waiting longer than us and they didn't really care. Yeah. And especially over the summer, I'm sure it even gets oh. crazier. There's obviously things that you miss about BC, things that you love about Lethbridge. Is there anything be honest. Like I'm, I'm always like Lethbridge's hype beast. So is there anything that you don't care for in Lethbridge or anything that, that you don't like about Lethbridge? I think the double, like, be the, honest, just yeah, go easy. Um, yeah, the double edged sword of, of Lethbridge is a town, but it's also a city. 
Right. So it's big, big town, small city. Yes. And yep. so people know you around here very quickly. Yeah. Like I've, you know, you and I have talked and all of a sudden you're like, oh, you know, this person and this person. Okay. Well, we're all connected. Yeah. And so it's very helpful. Like I had, like I said, there was a whole group of people. I hardly know they're ready to help me move. Right. So great. But I also can see, for example, in my, my job, I am a, a, you know, school counselor and just knowing that you're going to run into families and run into people. And it's not like I mind, but when I have got to keep that in the back of your mind, well, and I have, and I have, uh, I have a certain level of, of responsibility for confidentiality. So it's like, yeah. there's a certain point where, you know, when you, when you have a client for, uh, so to speak, it's actually not for me to acknowledge them in public. Right. Because that would be me sharing that I see them as a client. Mm. So then I'm in public. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> have to. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird to, one to have dance to be, around. Have to be a little more mindful about that because it's a it's a community that's just a lot smaller. Right. Right. So yeah. and then and so that that's that is a thing to get used to. But I think the pros outweigh the outweigh the cons as long, long as one. as long as you're not a big drama person that's going to get into a bunch of stuff yeah everyone's, everyone's going to know your drama here it's for sure <laughs> like i mentioned it in a couple of videos but like if you go to a hockey game or something you're going to run into like five ten people that yeah. you know all the yeah. time yeah. which especially, is cool especially so, especially some of these bigger events yep right? oh yeah for sure like the did you go to the food and beverage expo no i didn't that was just there. recently yeah. but i didn't go this year either but last year they're you know you see like 50 people that you know it's it's crazy so yeah and the more i know and the other one is is because of my business like even guaranteed if somebody in this town in this community sees this you're like oh i know that guy yeah because i'm working with their kids yep yeah for sure <laughs> so yeah it puts yep. you a little bit more in like mindful you know just being aware but it's right. part that's part of my my overall yeah you know business i think there's the other thing that i think people should be aware of is like you said last bridge is big big town small city so we don't have absolutely everything like we have everything you need like you said mm -hmm. but like me and my wife we still go up to calgary on a somewhat regular basis she has family that lives in lacombe mm -hmm. so we're driving through there often but we're often stopping at ikea yeah, or yeah. going to the mall up there to go do some big shopping runs or something like that but amazon does exist here that's true yep so yep you can, can pretty much can get anything get, <laughs> pretty much get anything what so. we go to up in calgary all the time is the tnt we do have like i oh, love the tnt we have that's uh, you know what we do have like asian markets one. here there's one i miss yeah we had a we had that's the place a go-to place for well there's the asian food store on the west or yeah. on the north side you've yeah. been to that one uh the north side no yeah. i've seen i've been to it's on 13th Mommy. street yeah so there's a 13th street one that's okay. also pretty good okay i'll have to check um, that out but it's like you can't compare that's a local one. That's fine. We'll yeah, go there yeah, when we need yeah, to. Yeah. But it's not. You can't compare like, like the fresh produce that you can get at TNT. That and is it's just, huge. Oh, it's awesome. It, yeah. We just stocked our fridge with a bunch of. I just made ramen tonight. So yeah, I got nice. fresh ramen noodles. Yeah, yeah. So those are the, just a few of the things that that we do run up to Calgary for. But then again, we got friends up there, so we like to go visit anyway. Yeah, yeah. But so. I, for us, it's like yeah, we could move to Calgary, but again, I don't want to pay. Like this house here would have been that we're in. We we paid like three seventy five for it would have been five almost six hundred thousand yeah in Calgary yep. so no thanks and that's not a and that's not a small amount yeah would have like doubled my mortgage almost so you know what that's a tough one I will uh, I think a dr uh, drive to Calgary once or twice well, well once a month or once every two months mm -hmm. that isn't the same as paying double your mortgage it's not and what I tell a lot of people too is if they've like I always ask well what's your commute like in BC if it's more than an hour, like you can drive well in driving an hour in BC is not the same as driving an hour here. No. An hour in BC is like 50 kilometers, 40 kilometers or something. Cause it's stop and go and yep. uh, lots of turns in the road. When you're driving an hour here, it's like you're going a hundred kilometers right. <laughs> so, or more. Funniest thing. It didn't take very long. Um, we had hardly put our stuff in, in our first little apartment here and we were having, we were driving up through Calgary and we all of a sudden, my wife and I are sitting there being, oh, I don't, I hate this traffic. <laughs> I'm done with this. I don't like it. Forgot about it already. <laughs> it's a very quick yeah. shift to be like, I don't like this. I yeah. don't want to keep doing it. That's something that I don't even kind of take for granted too. There's like no rush hour here no. at all. There'll be like an accident on Whoa. whoop up or something once or twice a year that'll stall you. But other than that. And there are still other ways around. Yeah, it's never <laughs> that bad. And even if you do get stuck on it, like, it's gonna you're not like stuck for like an hour it'll be like maybe 45 minutes max and people complain it took me 30 minutes to get to work today the nice part is that uh we moved at the end of summer one thing i also appreciated is 
there's a genuine summer here. Like it warms up. Oh yeah. It gets really quite warm and I'm really impressed with that. For sure. And my wife, she's that's, a big, she loves the heat. Okay. So just, that's been a, yeah. that was a big plus. With the wind, especially because it is the windy city there. It is pretty predictable and kind of seasonal. So I always say in the fall and the winter, when the seasons are changing, it's, you're going to get wind from time to time in the winter. It's going to get to like, we had that polar vortex that yep. swept over us and all of North America. It was like, on the worst of days, it was like minus 55, I think. Lasted like seven days and then the wind came and again, it's like plus seven again. Today, and it's, so. and I think that really was the worst of it. We've yep. had a few dips down, yep. but again, for a person that happens every year, where considers himself pretty soft from <laughs> all the warm weather in BC. Yeah. Um, at that same time, that polar vortex hit here. People were stuck in their cars for 12 hours in Vancouver. With the ice storms. With the, well, they got, uh, they got snowed in oh. and because of the snow oh, nobody, yeah. and nobody knows how to drive. It just, everything was dead. Yeah. And people literally ran out of gas and had to walk home Oof. after sitting in their car for 12 hours. Yeah. So might be in a bit of an embellishment, but it was absolutely wild out there. Yep. Whereas here, I got cold. I know. <laughs> it is kind of funny whenever it snows out there, but that's why the, the term Vancouver soft, right? Yeah. No, snows like this much. I know it's different out there. I used to work as a uh, as a gutter or east trough installer, so I know what it's like to work outside. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and I, again, the... You can bundle up for minus 40. It's really hard to bundle up for rain yeah. that's plus one or just at freezing. Yep. It becomes just it wet all day. just absolutely like bone chillingly cold. And yeah, it's weird. When it's like minus five in BC because it's so humid, it feels like it's minus 15. Like it just goes right yep. through you. It's horrible. Well, and I've watched guys from Alberta come out there. We work you know, work the same job yep. and they look at me, how do you, how do you work in this? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. It's like, yeah, yep. rain, rain gear, I guess. Yep. But no, I, and so there's, there's, again, there's, everything's a trade off. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, I come back to this idea of, but we still kind of live in Canada. Yep. So there's a certain but it's very similar, right? standard Just of living is, is comparable. Um, I mean, people here in Lethbridge certainly are going to be, I mean, even, was on the radio that one day and mm -hmm. there, you know the the topic of homelessness comes up and you know your heart goes out to the individuals and i i know that i am kind of the problem because i'm coming in and probably raising the prices up a bit but when i consider the when i consider the situation for people here i think this was something that i in my work i find interesting yep is i am aware that people are able to get by with less here right and so that is you know, almost like you worry because you see people, they're probably getting by with less, but they're able to. Yeah. And, and so that's they, a, that's a positive, but you also don't see how that's affecting their lives in the same way. Right. Because if people here are getting by, they wouldn't get by at all. Right. In the Vancouver area. Yeah. Right. Like where, where would you be living? And we're talking, you can. All yeah. Up. That's a much bigger spread. Yeah. Right. And so I, there's, there's just a mindfulness about that and that, you know, this is a town that I hope can continue to help support people and, For sure. and help them. But I, I think there's even opportunity. The bar to entry is a lot lower. Right. And so hopefully we can help support people this is a good place for people to come to. Yep. So anyway, yep. that's, that's my little soapbox. Sure. That's a, that's a really good perspective. And it's something that obviously we should probably be more mindful of too. Right. Because yeah, there is, no matter where you go, everybody has um, people that are struggling, but it is a weird perspective to think that like you could probably be, I don't know, I don't know how to say this, but you, you could be making, you could be struggling here and making double in Vancouver and that still wouldn't be enough. Right. And you'd be struggling even further. And if you were making the and same here less. in Vancouver and you'd yeah. be like even further behind. So yeah. yeah, it is kind of, it's not an opportunity, but it's, it, it's a, it's a, I, I don't know. I almost say it's an opportunity and I hope that if somebody was actually going, why am I kind of, if I can make ends meet in Vancouver, but it, I am you just making thrive. ends meet. You could probably be doing a little bit better here. Right. I know not everybody has the opportunity just to transfer their work. Yeah. And I don't, I know that my situation is going to be a little unique because I, my work is more portable than many others. Right. But I, you know, I, I imagine that's the only other thought. I'm like, I'm wondering how, what the job opportunities are for people that are, you know, 
Like you think of Vancouver, they're going to have more opportunities. Calgary's maybe more opportunities right. just because of the population. But I also have been hearing good projections here in Lethbridge that there are opportunities that are going to arise because there's lots of good investment and people are moving. Yeah. Like, uh, what was the, I think three, almost 3,000 people have come to town in the last couple months. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. not nothing. Not all of them are homeowners, but yeah, like the, the migration of people here is pretty significant, I think. And I think it's going to keep growing. Just me. Personally, like last year, I helped quite a bit of families move from out of town, mm -hmm. and already it's February, and the amount of inquiries I'm getting already has been insane. So I don't know what the spring is going to be like, but like right now, it's usually a slower time for real estate. And I don't, in my world, I just judge everything by how busy I am, right? And yeah, looking into the spring, it could be nuts. If jobs are portable, yeah, or even people are are able to still work remotely, or their their position allows them to move. Then I, you know, I I imagine that the opportunity to continue to build this city up, you know, you think of all those people that are coming in there, potential taxpayers, their potential, sure. you know, and uh, making investors. remote money that's even better, they're right? Just so dumping their money. Here. Right. So my hope is that the the city can continue to grow. I know that I I don't know you've been here through COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's been major shifts that way, but and I presume that the impact was felt here um, economically, but. Uh, but I also see that there's you know, Lethbridge is so sheltered from any big boom and bust that honestly, it's hard to feel anything like mm -hmm. that. And even like the 2008 financial crisis, mm -hmm. oil dips and rises all mm -hmm. over Alberta and you see it um, affect places like Red Deer, uh, Edmonton for sure in Calgary, a lot more than out here just because we're, there's agriculture is huge out here. Um, then the other biggest employers at the university and the college um, and the hospital. So those things are always running. Right. And then it's like all these other businesses are supported still. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we don't really have an industry that like boom and bust all the time. So even throughout COVID, I think the restaurant industry was probably right, the probably most the affected. Yeah. And, and that's like probably the one you things, see the right? most, right? Yeah. Because you drive down the street and you're like, restaurant closed, restaurant closed. Yeah. So you can see those, but for sure. But overall, There's lots of bars that close too. Yeah. But overall, I mean, I'm, I'm curious of what the future holds here because mm -hmm. I think there's lots of opportunity. Yep. Um, and I mean, that's but at the same time, if it stayed exactly the same as it is, I'm glad I'm, <laughs> I'm still glad I moved. City of Lethbridge had, had a meeting about um, what their new development plans are. And if they all pan out and they end up going through with them, it's going to be very cool downtown. Oh, nice. And they're trying to densify it some more to bring some more residents to downtown because right now it's like a destination nobody really lives down there i will tell you that is probably the thing that one of those things are just like my wife and i looked around we were downtown one of the first saturdays we were here and we're like where the heck is everybody <laughs> i've learned that you know lethbridge as a t as a town is much more people drive and go to a place yep so the walking traffic just isn't well we're so spread out that yeah. you kind of need to right yeah, so I, I can see, you know. But what, what they're trying to do is trying to get people more densified downtown yeah. and make it more walkable, which mm -hmm. I think is a good thing because. Yeah. Gives you a place to go, go to a place to hang out. Yeah. All these, all of us uh, outskirts folks yep. come in and go for a nice, you know, meal. And uh, well, you know, here's a good one. I was thoroughly impressed. One of my colleagues invited me to, uh, he was uh, performing in the, uh, um, one of the plays at the Yates Theater. Okay. I mean, again, I mean, they, the, I see a real dedication to the art scene here as well. Yep. And so there's lots of stuff going on. It might not be the same big shows that you're used to in some of the bigger cities, but you know, there's a, there's a real desire to provide entertainment and culture here as well. And I'm like, For sure. I was a, we've thoroughly enjoyed it. Yep. So the, that, I guess the other one is, uh, if I was to answer a question of something that is kind of like surprising, Sometimes agricultural smells do hit us here. Yep. You know, it's usually sudden. usually when they're like spraying a field or something yeah. with manure. Yeah, yeah. You'll like get a nice waft of it yeah, in yeah. the morning. I'm not saying, but, you know, um, we used to make fun of places like Abbotsford or Mission for the same sort of thing. If you're a part of agriculture, that yeah. comes with it. So if you want to eat food, then. <laughs> and, and then on the north side, are, is there a distillery? Uh, there's a distillery and there's a margarine plant. Okay. So, so it the, depends where you are in the North side, but yeah, it, right yeah. around like second Ave. Yeah. Right in there. Every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. You'll get it. 
My wife was like, and again, I lived on the north side. Yeah. So did I ever smell the margin plant over there? No, but you do smell agriculture from time to time. Yeah. yeah. But it's not like it's every day you're waking up and it just stinks outside. Like it's like, I don't know. Handful Maybe of I'm days. Maybe I'm just used to it, but yeah. Yeah, handful of days. So that was just, you know, let's be honest. There yep. was a moment where I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, I can't. Woof. That's like the wind. I can't <laughs> say there's no wind here, but. Oh, so that between that, but the other one that my wife and I noticed, we've talked about this a number of times. In the time since we moved here, we have gone and done more things than we were when we lived in Vancouver. Right. Just, is that it's financial because you have more part, financial time financial a bit more time too i think there's um more energy yeah i mean the description i use for friends that are uh, are back where i was it feels like my life was at an 11 in terms of busyness stress things like that okay and my move here yes partly is due to my job and sh- uh, shifting from an admin to a to more of a, a teaching counseling role right but i went from an 11 to about a six Okay. And just in busyness and just not feeling that. And I don't feel that stress as much. So then now my weekends aren't recovering from the week. Right. Not just drained by and, the end of and, it. Yeah. And and again, it may sound because it's a shift of job, but the shift of job meant I didn't have to work as long of hours. And even if I take a bit of a pay cut, I recouped days. Right. Days and days and days of time. Yeah. So that alone, I'm not hitting the weekend burnt out because I had to work that extra to be able to make sure that I can afford to live there. Yeah. I can literally turn the volume down and find a greater greater amount of peace. So now we're, you know, we went down to Montana. That was one. I mean, we've been up to Calgary, went up to uh, uh, Canmore. And so, you know, we just, in general, are feeling like I consider if people don't know of a place like Drumheller, mm-hmm. like you want to go see one of the best dinosaur museums in the world, mm-hmm. it's like two and a half hours, three hours away. Yep. Got Calgary. I'm looking forward to the Stampede because I've never been, even okay. though I was born in Calgary. Greatest outshore drum on earth. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you mentioned a few other places, Waterton. Riding on Stone. Riding on Stone. It's about an hour away. Yeah. Dinosaur National Park, different than than uh, uh, Drumheller. Drumheller. We, we got, crazy landscape. Kind of, we have ourselves at the edge of the Badlands here, right? Like, so yep. it's like, you know, you think of... Uh, those those who play World of Warcraft mm-hmm. think of some of like the areas around Ogremar. It's like, you know, it's got, <laughs> got a bit of that flavor. So my wife and I um, do lots of work with Travel Alberta and tourism organizations filming stuff. And that's one of like the competitive advantages that we have is mm-hmm. that we're in this area. So you can go west towards the mountains in an hour. You're, you're in like Waterton, which is like just as beautiful as Banff, a lot smaller. Uh, you can go east. There was, I guess, south and go to Writing on Stone, which has like incredible hoodoos, like the most incredible hoodoos you've ever seen. Uh, there's a ton of winding rivers on the way. Uh, then you can go to Cypress Hills, which is about three hours away in the southeast corner of Alberta. And it's these big lodgepole trees. It's the same elevation as Banff mm. and it's a dark sky preserve. So there's the most stars that you'll ever see in your whole life. Isn't that where you said you... Uh we're worried you're going to get attacked by cougars. Yep. It's also the the highest population of cougars in all of North America. If you want so. to go cougar sighting. Terrifying. Problem is once you see them, probably a bad time for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you don't want to see one. But yeah, anywhere you go around here, there's always like some of the most magnificent landscapes. Well, and on the west the side world. here, I cannot believe how brazen the deer are. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I have a photo of them just sleeping in my neighbor's backyard. <laughs> you know, four point buck. Right. Like yep. people would be envious of seeing one, let alone he's just sleeping there. Yeah, he's deer there. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing I never even bring up because it's just so normal. Right. Yep. There's like, they'd be like, use the crosswalks here sometimes. <laughs> well, I saw a bus on my way here yep. stopping for the deer. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it's like, all right. Yep. For sure. No, and I'm, imp- I'm impressed with, uh, you know, the more I hear about the town, I mean, uh, the University of Lethbridge, I think, uh, big draw, international draw too. Mm-hmm. And, but I think, you know, as a person in education, it's a university to be proud of. Yep. Um, it's got lots of opportunities. It's a good research facility. And then there's the uh, college and all people that work there. And I, I'm really excited to find out that that's actually got where you can go play squash. Mm-hmm. So yep. that was, again, one of those like, oh, I looked at my racket in my in my shed. I'm like, oh, and one day I'd like, and then somebody's like, oh, I went and played squash. Yep. I think the big, the big piece that I really enjoy is the more I talk to people around here, the more I realize that there's so much depth to, mm-hmm. and opportunity and things like that. I'm just like, you know what? I feel like I've found a place that I can anchor myself and prepare for a, a very high quality retirement. That's awesome. Yep. 
That's awesome. So my last question of the day was, would you recommend Lethbridge? And I think you've answered yeah, it. Yeah, I think so. so. <laughs> I, I mean, if you, huh, I'll phrase it in a bit of a story when I moved here. First couple of days we moved here, we'd go into a restaurant, ask the person who's serving us, hey, we just moved to town. What would you recommend? So we just got here. And they go, leave. <laughs> And my wife and I actually were kind of like, what? And I know for her, she was, it really, we had a, you know, a day or two where it was like, is it, was this the right move? Yeah. seems like everybody we talked to has some sort of negativity. And as I've gotten to know the town, I can totally understand why a young person could see the grass being greener on the other side, mm -hmm. right? Like, especially a city. All the, all the nightlife, the, the opportunities. And I've been there. Yeah. And yep. I, I mean, I, I remember that when I lived out in the suburb, the suburbs of uh, the Vancouver area and I'm like, oh, I want to move to new Westminster yep. right down into the action of everything. Lived right over the sky train, was able to go anywhere I wanted. Did I? No. <laughs> well, once you're there, yeah, it's a totally different ball and, game, right? And, like and, it seems very romanticized, but. Yeah, and it, were there things that were nice about it? For sure. Now that I'm here and now that I've kind of hit that point in my life where I'm going, I don't, I'm happy to be somewhat boring, happy to go and take a trip here and there, yep. you know, save up some money and do the things that we want to do yep. versus just, you know, uh, spend all your money going out. Well, yeah, like for us, like we do have a pretty decent cost of living out here. So mm -hmm. we are allowed, we can travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So that's what we love to do. Calgary is an easy place to get a lot of places. In the end, if you're looking to enjoy, you know, say you're in your early 20s and you're looking to have a lot of excitement, yeah, you might find it a bit of a sleepy town. But if you're starting to plant roots and you want to uh, establish uh, some financial goals and mm -hmm. you want to make, uh, make the type of plans for yourself that may long term be the best benefit for you, I would say this is a really good place. Yep. Can I say better myself? Well, you do say it all the time. <laughs> that's, how well, I got, that's how I got here. Sure. I, I I always do feel a little bit weird because I feel like I'm selling Lethbridge mm -hmm. pretty hard. But I, just so you know, you are. Okay. Well, <laughs> you're technically, I, you're literally selling ground. True, true. But I'm, <laughs> I also try to be like, say both sides of it. So that's why mm. I did a pros and cons video <clears> because <throat> like any city, uh, every city has its problems. No city's perfect. This just has a few things that people might enjoy and like, like the, well, my biggest pitch is that it's so affordable and yeah. that's huge for a lot of people, including myself. Yeah. Pros and cons of Lethbridge. The one that I've been getting asked a lot lately is what is the crime like in Lethbridge? Oh, because yeah. you see lots of stats about the crime in Lethbridge and what's the crime like. And so let's, I would probably start with on a gut level. Sure. Like, yeah, your experience. When, when you, when you walk around Lethbridge. Yep. It's a really sleepy town and there's not a lot just going on. Right. Is there always, when you have uh, challenges around socioeconomic stuff, are you going to find some upticks and things? Yeah, of course. And I think there is kind of like that dividing line. Like I mentioned, there's, there's like, I work in a school that, you know, we interact, especially my job. I interact with the families quite a bit that might be struggling. And mm -hmm. so again, you might be seeing greater impacts of the socioeconomic, even though it doesn't seem that way. However, when it comes to actual crime and the feeling of safety, I think this is a very safe town. I think when I chuckled with my wife about this, I think it's a town that's used to leaving their doors unlocked. Yes. Like should be able to leave my door unlocked and, yep. and my stuff should be able to just stay in my yard and nobody's going to take it. And I'm like, I'm used to stepping over people outside of my apartment because of how difficult the, their lives are back home, back in, not in, in or not back, in, not back home, back in BC, not back in, in BC. Bridge. Like, so, and seeing, seeing that difference, is there going to be issues? Yes. Like um, any city, like any city. And I think recognizing that this is a city is important, yep. but I also am curious of, you know, how many times have I had my car broken into and rummaged through in let's say new Westminster multiple times. Right. Did I ever report it? Never once. Yeah. Because I had too busy going to work. Yeah. Whereas I have a feeling that people are not used to some of that. For sure. And so that has probably made a shift. My gut tells me a little bit of over-reporting. And I mean, I'm not saying over-reporting in terms of like, oh, you shouldn't report your crime, the crime that's there. But right. it's like people are just so desensitized in other places, it doesn't even come up, come up on the radar. Yeah, for sure. 
So in terms of violent crime, what I understand is that violent crime is really not high at all. It's property crime. Yeah. So, you know, lock your doors, don't leave your change in your car and, yep. you know, don't leave your, you know, bike, ba- your, your bag or your, your, your bike bikes just sitting whatever. around yep. and I think you'll be fine. Yeah. And I think that's just, that's the city perspective where you come in and you're like, crime, what are you talking about? I, I, I did laugh when you first came to Lothbridge. I remember meeting you about it and you're like, so can you tell me more about like the crime out here? Cause I'm hearing about it. And like, you looked left, you looked right. You're like, what crime? Yeah, where, <laughs> where, yeah, there's, there's some pockets of places where I can totally tell people are, you know, is there, are there homeless people here? Yes, there are homeless people here. Find, Find that. a city that doesn't have yeah. homeless people. If you are in a town and you're expecting not to see it, yeah. well then this is going to be a little and, bit of a shock. And nobody wants that. And hopefully they, there's a solution coming from the city. Who knows? But but when I compare the experience of uh, places like Vancouver or, oh, God forbid, uh, traveling down through Seattle and to, to Portland, I mean, that more recent trips, I mean, there are places that are struggling a lot harder Uh-oh. than we are. I've, I've heard Portland. Uh, I'm actually going to Seattle with my wife for her birthday mm-hmm. this weekend. Mm-hmm. So what you'll notice is just the higher, higher level of impact. Okay. I think that's that's really what it comes down to. And I think uh, protective factors here, the cost of living is a protective factor. I think that yep. does reduce some. But is there still some weird stuff that goes on? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. I, I, my gut tells me, and that's not a scientific evidence, but my gut tells me you are not going to see crime like you've been used to if you've been in a city. Right. I think that's what most people are looking for when they, and they, they're asking me. So I'm like telling them the same thing you're telling them, but it just feel it's different when you're hearing it from somebody that's not me too. Right. Well, and I would also suggest that here living on the West side, as you move kind of further from the middle of town, Mm -hmm. you're going to end up finding yourself away from where people, yeah. And and I, and I, I think there's going to be a addiction issue. There's going to be, um, socioeconomic issues. There's societal issues, of course. And, and they're going to be where you find them. But I, lived in Langley or lived around Langley. It's a a city in the Vancouver area, about half the population. And I'd say their downtown is even more surprisingly uh, dealing with uh, with some of these exact same issues, but it's just even more apparent. School I was vice principal at, I had to actually shoot people away from sleeping in the school, like, right. you know, so, yeah. and, and you, you wish that there was a better solution than just shooing people away. Cause it doesn't, that doesn't seem to be working. Yeah. But in terms of just your question, crime and safety, lock your door. Yeah. I think that's just a standard practice to anybody who's lived in a, in well, a city. And again, most people are coming from BC, Vancouver, they're, I, I always kind of chuckle too. And I'm like, where are you coming from? Because if you're going to come here and you're not going to, feel like anything right like oh. it's just going to be better than what you're used to by i don't know 100 times i'm sure like yeah and i and again i think the community aspect the fact that people know each other yeah it also is another protective factor that hey stuff is going on here and we and more people are talking more people are connected For sure. versus people feeling like they're a little bit of an island in the midst of what is it the alone in a crowd right well you've answered the last question i had again was would you recommend that for jerry said yes that's what i wanted to end on and then we got sidetracked again so that's all right yeah so the answer uh, the answer is yes okay and that's good no the crime's not that bad and (laughs) uh and i wish there were just a few more restaurants okay then maybe there will be soon, hopefully. <laughs> Working on it. Uh, we can always use, actually, did you know Lethbridge has more restaurants per capita than any other city in Alberta? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So, we just then, need... so then it's just more variety. There we go. Yeah. yeah fair so enough. Make your way. Come on in. Yeah. Come on down. We could use some good restaurant tours for sure. Yeah. I don't think anybody would complain. But thanks again for being on the podcast. No thanks for your time and thanks um, for inviting me. If you guys liked this podcast and you don't want to miss another podcast, another home tour about Lethbridge videos, Uh, Be sure to hit that like button. It truly helps me out and helps me grow this channel. And be sure to hit that subscribe button. So we'll see you guys on the next one. And like I said, you'll never miss one. Thanks again. We'll talk to you later. Bye.